I think if I was to give my children any advice about life, it would be to do the thing they love most. Because whatever it might be, tough as it might be, you'll enjoy it every single day and you will work so hard at it because it's a, it's a pleasure and it's basically a compulsion, I think. My name is Larry Norton. I'm a wildlife artist from Zimbabwe. I started drawing at a very early age, probably for something like that. Was, I can't even remember when I started. And by the time I was six, I could draw pretty much anything. I was lucky in that my gran was an amateur landscape painter. So she did a, a bit of painting and I got a set of oil paints when I was 10. And I always painted right the way through, although I never thought that I would do art as a full-time career till much later. My dad loved wildlife. Um, we often went on hunting trips, fishing trips, up to Lake Kariba, all over the place. All of this had a huge influence on my life and on what I eventually ended up painting. As a result, the wildlife and landscapes of Africa have been the core of my work. that's been keeping us going in this heat, which is sort of in the mid 40s, and maybe even hotter out on the, the uh, sand there, is rehydrate. And we've been drinking this with water because it is just so unbelievably hot, but uh, the baboons have had a go. Gonorajor is, is a remarkable park. Doing this painting here has been an incredible experience. I thought that it might be tough, but it's actually been probably the hardest field painting I've ever, ever done. These are very tough conditions. The temperatures are in the 40s and there's massive wind. And uh, as soon as you're trying to do detail on the painting, the wind blows so the canvas vibrates. Uh, it, it's, it's not an easy one. Palette is complete. I've never had a palette <laughs> completely covered in sand. I'm gonna have to scrape it clean, throw away all the paint and start again. They're the proper colors. That's what it's looking like. We've had elephant coming in and out. We've had baboons um, whenever we turn our back. The baboon has just run out of the studio and as usual has been playing with the paint. I've got away with the lunch. One left. The concept of a piece varies Sometimes you might see something and spontaneously know that that scene has to be painted. I mean, I've sometimes gone on a run, I've seen something, I've come back to the studio and I've painted exactly what I've seen. 
other times on a, uh, a trip like this, you have an idea of basically the scene you might be painting. But then you get here and you start to work and you let the story unfold around you. And uh, it's been amazing how the whole painting has unfolded. I've been trying to decide what species to go in. And yesterday we had an elephant bull come in from drinking. Obviously knew that we were here. And in a very profound way came to inspect what was going on. And he paused at the base of the slope and slowly made his way up, stopping every now and again. And eventually just came a couple of meters behind the painting, walked past and wandered off. Absolutely no aggression at all, completely uh, relaxed. Very, very special and unforgettable. Often I'm accompanied by Stanley Chizinga, who has worked for our family for many years. Stanley grew up on our farm and he uh, was an orphan at the age of 16 and uh, he's been with us ever since. He comes along and Stan is my assistant and just helps with everything. For me, to go into, into the bush is like a hearing. It's like a remedy to me. It's always, when I came from the bush, I'd be a fresh mind. Happier person, so I really enjoyed to go to the bush. Every day uh, we had to go through quite a logistical exercise with the painting. It was necessary in the evening for Stan and I to carry it to a nearby position in, a, in some very thick bush uh, and put it in the container. The painting is put back into this box every evening and we come and fetch it in the morning to take it back to the studio. But there's obviously a lot of elephant around and hippo coming out of the pools, so we don't want something big to put a foot through it. After that, they followed the fairly heavy exercise of securing the painting, which involved digging a hole, putting rocks on the base of the easel, and then tying the corners of the painting to logs and trees. And this was because of the wind which was constant and very strong. This morning, we noticed that there were some lion in the riverbed very early on, three big males. Uh, they were quite nervous and crossed back into the bush. We managed to get around and get some shots of them where they had uh, gone across the road, but magnificent lions and uh, I think I'm going to include them in the foreground of the painting. Once the initial work has been done in the field, uh, I, I will almost always bring the painting back into the studio and finish it up in the studio. And the reasons for this are multiple. I, I like to add a bit more detail and, and, and texture. Often the painting is in quite a rough condition because of the conditions in which I'm working. There's often dust and sand and sticks and insects stuck in the oil paint, uh, so it has to be cleaned up. And then also very often there's been an experience that I haven't been able to capture in the moment of actually doing the field painting, an interaction with game or something I've seen before or after that relates to the painting. So I like to incorporate that in the painting itself. It's been an, an incredible trip that we've had. We've seen amazing game. It's been very, very difficult to paint under these conditions, but uh, we've, we, I think we've done okay. And uh, got the canvas covered as I, I hoped we might. Um, but I'm tired, it's been hard. The point at which you know when a painting is finished is, is uh, fairly elusive. Sometimes it's very clear, other times you'll watch a painting for maybe a week and uh, you'll notice 
something quite radical that needs to be changed. Uh, very often you, you will take stuff off a painting that you've done uh, with a lot of work. Um, and uh, that sometimes proves to be the su success of the painting is, is less is more and removing something can be just as successful as adding something on. The way you feel when a painting is finished varies. Uh, normally you're very relieved because it's been physically a huge task. And always at the end it's been the detail work which is uh, sometimes less exciting than the beginning of a painting which is broad brush strokes and you're moving very, very quickly. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of gritting your teeth and, and grinding through it. Uh, there's always a huge amount of satisfaction, but often by the end, especially of a big one, you're pretty, pretty exhausted. I think if there's a legacy from my work, it maybe is to speak primarily of the country of Zimbabwe. I'm very, I guess, patriotic is the word. I love this country. I've loved it always through thick and thin, and we've been through some terrible times here. But there's so much good that outweighs the bad. And there's that wonderful saying that uh, instead of looking at everything that's been lost, you find the small pieces of beauty that remain and focus on those. And these sort of places speak volumes. Uh, this is a special place, not just in terms of the environment, but in terms of the people. And uh, I don't know, I hope that somehow my paintings celebrate the real essence and spirit of this country, Zimbabwe, as opposed to all the bad. Just hang on, because you're asking a lot of different questions there. I'll just cut there. Just, uh... Do you want me to talk to you or to the camera? We cut there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>